Hi, now I've got this question here that uh, if you haven't tried it already you might like to just pause the video and have a go. It's on calculating the product moment correlation coefficient and I'm assuming that you're fairly familiar with this. If not, just go on my website examsolutions.net and you should find plenty of tutorials on this. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. What we've got is a bank reviews its customer records at the end of each month to find out how many customers have been unemployed, you, and how many have had their house repossessed, H, during that month. And the bank codes the data using variables X, which equals U minus 100 all over 3, and Y, which equals H minus 20 all over 7. And we've got the results for the 12 months of 2009 as summarized below. And what we've got to do is we've got to calculate the value of the product moment correlation coefficient for X and Y first of all. And then write down the product moment correlation coefficient for U and H. Well, just a little bit of background here, okay? When you have a scatter diagram, let's just suppose we've got a scatter diagram here with X and Y as our axes. And if we were to plot on our scatter diagram a series of points like this, we would find a line of best fit. And the measurement of how scattered these points are about the line is called the product moment correlation coefficient. It's given by the letter R. And it's always a value that lies between minus 1 and 1. And we can calculate R by using this formula, which you quite often see in formula books. But I would still suggest that you learn it. It's given by R equals S of XY all divided by the square root of SXX and SYY. Now, SXY we don't have. They've given us summary statistics up here. SXX we do have, and we have SYY. Okay, but we need to work out what SXY is first of all. And again, this formula is generally given in most formula books, so do check it out. If not, make sure you do learn it. Well, it pays to learn it anyway, I feel. But SXY is equal to the sum of sigma, in other words, of XY, the product of your variables, minus sigma X multiplied by sigma Y. And that is all divided by n. So we just need to fill in these values here. So sigma xy we're given as being 23,070. So we've got 23,070 minus sigma x, that's 477. And that's multiplied by sigma y, which is 480. And we divide this result here by n, the number of observations. Well, it says here the results for the 12 months of 2009 are summarized below, so n must be that 12. So we divide by 12. And if you work this out, we end up with this equaling 3,990. Okay, so now we're in a position to work out what R is, okay? So R, we got therefore R is going to be equal to SXY, which we've just worked out, 3,990. And we're dividing this then by the square root of the product of SXX and SYY. So SXX then is 5606.25. Just put that in brackets. And we're multiplying this by SYY, which is 4,244. And we're expecting a result that lies between minus 1 and 1 inclusive. So if we don't get something like that, then we know we've done something wrong. Okay. So when we work this out, 
what we get is in fact 0.8179 and so on. And I'll give this say to three significant figures which would be 0.818 to 3SF, three significant figures for short. Okay, well that's part A, so just label that part A there. And now we move on to the second part, part B. So we just roll that off there. Part B. Now it does say write down the product moment correlation coefficient for U and H for one mark. So it's got to be easy. Well it turns out that it's going to be exactly the same. Even though we're using a transformation here, these are linear transformations. If you were to rearrange this for U, U would be equal to 3 times x plus 100. This is a linear transformation. And if we make h the subject here, h would be equal to 7y plus 20. Again, a linear transformation. So whenever you get this, the product moment correlation coefficient always remains exactly the same. And I feel that there's a bit of a giveaway there anyway when it's just got right down and it's one mark. So what we can say is that the product moment, okay, product moment for U and H equals 0.818 to 3SF. Okay, three significant figures. Okay, well I hope that's given you an idea across those two parts of the question.